this mean in terms of now you know what your dominant personality style is? Let's take a look at it at a more global picture. What's the potential problem here? Any guesses? You can see the face. It's with different personalities. Yeah. I mean, if you are very interested on the people and you're working with someone who is very focused on the facts. And just the fact that Exactly. That's exactly right. Could you say that? Because the task-oriented person's reality is not the same as the person who's worried about other people's feelings. Yes. But then can you say on the same sense that because they're so different, they work perfectly together? I mean, personally, my parents work together, and they're completely different. Then I would say your parents are sensitive to each other's needs. That's the, that's the key. They complement each other because they put some effort into it. Okay? They didn't ignore each other. They complement each other. Because right? I can put those two people together and they ignore each other and they have conflict. But isn't it how you set up the two people that could cause the conflict? For example, if you do get the two people and you put them together, mm -hmm. would you first need to gear them towards a common goal, then they would be sensitive towards the other other's needs, and I, it would have an effect on I would the get. I would do it the other way first. I would say get to know each other first, and then set the common goal together. Because the way you're going to look at the goal is going to be different depending on your personality style. The way you interpret it, the way you visualize it, the way you conceptualize it. Okay. Yes? Uh, this is uh, one example we just found out here. Elena and I have done a lot of projects together and they turned out pretty good. Mm -hmm. Her personality style turned out to be a thinker and sensor on my name to be the favorite. Okay. Right, so they can be either complementary or conflictive. It depends on the effort that you put into it. Okay, so if you look at the next slide, here's the big assumption. What we were talking about, conflict and disagreement, are, are natural because we're trying to put meaning on something. We're trying to create our own meaning, our own reality, based on what our personality style is. Oh, I did it again, sorry. Okay. So, it's only a problem if we assume everybody's thinking the way we are and we don't do anything about it. So, what can we do to get along better? What can we do? I try to understand them, make an effort to exactly try to understand what the other person's doing. Okay, so we need a little instrument, which you did already, to get an idea of what your personality is, and to communicate using the different styles. Now, the intuitor has the strengths that we talked about, but they also have weaknesses. Sometimes they get bored and impatient. The sensor, yes, is very good at risk taking and very good at getting things done and enjoy, enjoying what they're doing, but they may be inflexible and they're not good listeners, if you remember the first slide. Feelers, very good, they're very warm, they're very friendly, they're very people oriented, but sometimes they can be very slow because they're not concerned about the past, they're concerned about your feelings. <laughs> And finally, the thinkers are very orderly and very logical, but they might be a little bit too slow and a little bit too cautious for our intuitors who just want to, boom, go out there and start the latest. Okay, so in the last half an hour, what are your tips for communicating effectively? Do you have any tips you can offer us? Yes? I think it's also a give and take. For example, if you're talking to a group of people or you're talking to one person in particular, how you address them, you can see their reaction. So if you're talking one on one and you see, you can tell that someone's face they pay attention if they lose concentration or it's just a bit skippy to them, then you can start to change how you go at your topic so it's more designed towards them. Exactly. You need to create a feedback loop like you were doing with your partners just here. You can't just do it just from your own theoretical framework in your head or your intuition. You really have to be interactive with the other people on your team. Any other ideas on how to communicate better? You have to make people part of your idea so they are motivated to work on it. If it's your idea, they may start it because you know, you're, maybe you're their boss and they have to do it, but they won't be motivated so they won't be as effective. Good. And it was a good example of that in the case study when the, the professor from Columbia went and he gave a presentation and he thought they were all thinkers and they taught, turned out to be sensors 
and then he got in trouble, okay? Until he realized he had to adapt his style. This would look like in the conclusion, okay, if you flex your personality style, you will become a better communicator. And what it looks like along this flat line, one dimensional, this means this is my way, and I'm only going to do it my way. Neutral is just whatever happens will just happen, and then highly versatile means you will adapt your personality style to everybody in your group. So let me show you how effective this will grow depending on the communication style that you choose to use with people that you interact with on a daily basis. Okay, yes, I have time for one question or two questions. Yeah. I was wondering, if you say have a group of people working together yeah. and the majority of the people are, let's say, big because then you have one feeler amongst the group, mm -hmm. would the feeler just out of being surrounded by thinkers inadvertently change their community style because of the rest of them? That's a good question. What do you guys think? That's a good question. No. Three thinkers, one feeler. What should we do? Well, if, it's, oh, if it's a feeler... I don't know, because you know, they're very, they, they adapt to people to, to make him feel better. So if he's, if a feeder sees people are bored because, you know, the presenter is trying to convince them, they may say, okay, I'm good, I'm good, I understand. But maybe another style would, um, would definitely not adapt to the others. So, like, if, if you have an intuiter and the room is full of thinkers, if you're, like, trying to explain it's too long, the intuitor is going to get bored. He's going to be like, he will. Guaranteed. Yes. Kind of the feeler in our room The problem is, um, I don't know, I'm just thinking for my own experiences. They can also close up. And not leave the group because they have to be there to help. But close up and, you know, just. In, in, interact when they are extremely important. If the thinkers never consider the, uh, the yeah. feeler's emotional state, like if they have buy-in with where you use where they are, the, the, the feeler will shut down emotionally. Because you have emotion, but they, they know how to control their emotions too. Okay, they can shut down. So, what's, what's the advantage of having a feeler on a team of thinkers? A different perspective. Yeah. Also, it's more sensitive to the people, on how the people will react to what the same person Okay, even though you have thinkers too, some at some point those thinkers are going to have to interact with other people that aren't thinkers. Those ideas that they come up with, that analysis they're going to do with, is going to be communicated down the line, outside that circle. So it's taking into consideration that maybe we're living in a real world where everybody's not a thinker. Okay? It's fine. If you have four people that are thinkers, fine. We don't have to adapt. But there's a reason why that feeler's on your team. So, and is it going, are, is your team going to be working effectively and harmoniously if you ignore the feeler? No, no. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's because like we are getting to the like a company actually needs uh, public relations and center to be able to interact with the customer and everything. It needs good feeders which might be able to interact with more people rather than thinkers that are more closed into themselves and to their like back for world. And well I have a question. Like, yeah. When I got a result of very just compensated result, I got intuitive the most and thinker too and they're they're both opposite but I don't, I don't know how Okay. Yeah. I this is. I would say there. You, can, you know, it's like the glass is half empty, it's half full. They can be. They can be opposite, or they can complement each other. Yeah. So, this is not perfect science. In fact, if you take this one day and you're feeling great, like after you've been at a party with friends, and then you take it the next day after a physics test, you might get different answers. Yeah. Okay. So the thing is just to look at where your tendencies are. Yeah. Okay, like where, how you structure the world, how you interact with other people, how you relate to information and ideas, and how that, that is communicated to other people, that's all. Yeah. It's just to give you a little bit of awareness. It's not a perfect science. None of these personality tests are perfect sciences. Because, I mean, you're, get, you're really, it's quantitative, those answers, they're not qualitative. 
Yeah. I mean, they're qualitative, they're not quantitative. Okay. Did I answer your question? Yeah. More or less. It's, it's not like maybe it's the answer. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I think we're done with the time. So, do you, I'm going to. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.